Here's a few example ways to use digital potentiometers. I'm going to be working with these microchip MCP 41 or 42 series parts. I have the 42, which is a dual potentiometer. The 41 is a single. And these are controlled with an SPI interface. So it's standard, it's easy to use with an Arduino. And in the past, I've used these X9C series digital pots, and they worked just fine, although they have a non-standard control interface. And that could be actually beneficial sometimes because you can control this with discrete signals. You don't need a communication bus. But aside from that, these parts are looking kind of expensive, over $10 for just quantity one of a single potentiometer while the microchip MCP41 series is only a couple of dollars for quantity one. So I made this breadboard compatible breakout board for the MCP42 series with today's sponsor, PCBWay. So I set up the pin spacing so it would easily dock into a breadboard and have space to plug in other wires. Or if there's no breadboard, then DuPont headers can be just plugged into the pins on this module. And since this is the dual pot chip, I have the two potentiometers right here with the labels for pot 0 and 1, A and B, and wiper terminals with a schematic symbol for easy hookup. This part series comes in 10, 50, and 100K variants. So I have the 100K. And you get 256 wiper tap positions that you can set. So over the SPI bus, if you configure the wiper position with a value of 128, it would be halfway between 0 and 100K on the wiper. This can run between 2.7 and 5.5 volts, so I'm going to be running it at 5 volts in my experiment with an Arduino Nano. And one feature of this part is upon power-up or otherwise being reset, the pot wiper ends up in the middle position as opposed to being in some random location or at one or the other extreme end of the pot. So at least it's in a known state and you can design a circuit to account for that. So looking at the specs for the 100K version of the pot, with the tolerance on it, it can actually range between 70K and 130K. The one that I was testing with measured around 110K. And we can't just get down to a straight short circuit from the wiper to one of the pot terminals. There's going to be some wiper resistance, a few hundred ohms maybe. And there's a maximum wiper current spec. So we have to make sure our circuit does not allow more than one milliamp to flow through this digital pot. And we also have to keep the voltage present on this potentiometer within our max VDD. So I'm operating at 5 volts. I just have to make sure this potentiometer itself is not going to see more than 5 volts. And here's a typical application circuit where they have a micro. In my case, it's an Arduino Nano. This would be the SPI serial clock data out of the nano and into the digital pot and a chip select to address this chip power supply and just three terminals of a potentiometer or two if it's the two potentiometer version here's the schematic of the breakout board power supply spi control pins and reset and shutdown which have pull-up resistors to keep it in operation by default, and potentiometer 0 and 1 going to the other header. In my demo sketch, these nano pins here connect up to these digital pot pins for chip select, data coming into the pot, and the serial clock. Then down in the sketch, I'm just running a couple of demos where I'm going in a loop through all the possible 256 wiper positions, and I'm changing the pot wiper, waiting a little bit, and then doing the next increment in one direction, then the other direction. For the first demo, I just move a pot in increments of about 25% of the full range until I go from minimum to maximum, so I can measure this on a multimeter and see what the resistance is. For this first test, we have the dual digital pot on this red board here, plugged into the breadboard. The breadboard is getting 5 volts from this power strip breakout board, 
coming from a bench supply. And I'm using this because later I'm going to plug in a second board that needs 5 volts as well. So this is the cleanest way to do it. We have the Nano here to control the digital pot, and this is also getting its 5 volts from this breadboard setup. Right now the ohm meter is connected across the end terminals of pot 0, so it's on A0 and B0. There's no wiper connected, and with no power connected we just have high impedance right now, so it's about 7.9 megs across the pot. Now I'll give it 5 volts, and we should see close to 100k. And we get 110k or so. So now it's going up approximately 25k at a time, give or take. So now it's at maximum resistance. Then it's running the part of the sketch where the wiper goes up one step per amount of time. So that's going to keep counting up until it gets to the maximum just over 100k resistance. Then it should start going back down. So that's just to exercise this and show that I'm able to control it so I know what to expect when I put this into another circuit. So I'll fast forward this. Now it's getting up to the max, and now it's going backwards, so it's going to count all the way down to the minimum resistance. So now I know that's working, and the sketch in here is controlling the digital pot. So what I want to do now is I want to use this op-amp breakout board I made about a year ago for the next experiment still using the Nano as an SPI controller for the digital pot. Everything is running at 5 volts, so I'm using this easy op-amp evaluation board I made a year ago, which has an op-amp, including a negative supply generator. So I'm going to give it plus 5 volts. The op-amp is going to be powered with plus and minus 5 volts. And I'm going to leave the gain at a certain setting. But what I am going to do is take a sine wave from a signal generator, feed it into one terminal of the pot, the other end terminal goes to ground, and then there's an output signal on the wiper going to the input of this op-amp circuit. So with this having a fixed gain, all I'm going to do is use the pot to attenuate the input by moving the wiper between completely seeing the input sine wave, so maximum possible gain, or the input of this circuit is seeing ground, so we should see no signal coming in. Just as a quick demo to show the kind of things we can do with op-amp circuits. Here's the next test setup. We have the sine wave generator going into this op-amp board, but it's going through this digital pot as a level input control. The nano is going to be sweeping this pot up and down and controlling the input level to the op-amp. So just like the original resistor test, we're going to first jump in more major increments across 0 to 100% scale, and then it's going to do a slow sweep. And on the scope, the bottom trace is the fixed input coming from the signal generator, and the top trace is the changing gain output of the op-amp. We can just see it reached a maximum and now it's being attenuated again. So I'll zoom in on just the scope, I'll reset the nano, and the signal is going to jump in amplitude all over the place a bit and then just start sweeping. So I'm resetting the nano. There we have a high gain, lower gain, and then it's attenuating the signal more and more at the input of the op amp. Now it's down to nothing. Now it started at a maximum and it's scaling down because the pot wiper is moving gradually in a direction to attenuate the input. In this next demo, here's the digital pot again. So we're still going to have the nano controlling it over here. And this time I'm making use of both potentiometers on just a small section of this bigger sound generator board I made maybe four years ago now. So it has a 555 tone generator, and there's all kinds of other things. I'm only using the 555. And this board used to have a physical potentiometer. I've temporarily removed it and connected that up to one potentiometer on this digital pot. 
The control voltage pin on the 555 I made available on a header, so I'm also putting the second digital pot wiper on the control voltage of the 555. Then the pot goes from 5 volts to ground, and the wiper can set the control voltage pin between 5 volts and ground. So this allows me to use the first digital pot to adjust the overall pitch of the sound. And then if I change the control voltage along the way, I can sort of modulate that frequency by changing the RC timing characteristics of the circuit, overriding it. So you can create something a little more interesting than a steady tone. And here's the final test setup. The op amp board is now gone. And both digital pots on this board are going to this sound generator 555 based board I made around four years ago. The Nano is still controlling the digital pots. And now 5 volts from this power breakout board has an extra 5 volts coming to here along with the breadboard to power this stuff. And I'm only using this tiny 555 circuit up in the corner of this entire board. It's an A stable oscillator configuration. As we control one digital pot, moving the wiper from end to end, we're just controlling the pitch of the 555 as we normally would with any other pot. So the Nano is going to sweep that pitch up and down. But at the same time, every so often, while we're gradually changing the pitch, it will take the other pot and quickly go up and down. So it's going between 0 and 5 volts quickly. That goes to the control voltage pin and it modulates whatever the current pitch is. So we're basically overriding it and making the pitch kind of sweep a little bit so it's not a steady decline or increment. And that's just to show how we can use two different pots on a 555 to move toward creating more interesting sounds. And the output of this 555 goes to this audio jack breakout board into this amplifier. So I'll turn the amplifier on and we can see what it's doing. So as the tone pitch was falling, it would occasionally sweep up a bit and down a bit. So one pot controlled the overall tone falling, and the other pot controlled momentarily overriding it and changing the pitch a bit. So that can be used for all kinds of things. This was just a quick test. I have a couple of ideas for using this specific digital pot in upcoming projects, so now I have a platform I can use for prototyping.